Hello everyone out there, this is Peter Harris of Commercial Property Advisors. I hope you're all doing well today. I have today a very special video from a very special human being, Jordan, one of our students who just closed in his first commercial deal where he is converting a, a, a small town a motel into a full-blown apartment building in an area that's where demand is through the roof. It's about three hours from Seattle, so you know he is going to be very successful. He is going to have a lot of demand for what he's creating. Now, there are two uh, reasons why you need to watch this video. Number one, this is Jordan's first deal. He comes from the single family home investing arena and he's going into commercial and you have to watch how he did this without a bank. Number two, you're going to see the coming together of two human beings, two people, Jordan, our student, and the seller, Jeanette, right? Uh, able to, uh, helping each other achieve each other's life goals. Now, for Jordan, it was to create generational wealth for himself, his wife, and his three boys. And for Jeanette, the seller, to retire herself, he's 84 years old, and to help her two adult children and lead them a fortune. Guess what? Mission accomplished. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how it all came together. Let's do that next. All right, before we get to the interview, I'd like to give you a little bit of context in what I call the three rules of commercial estate investing. I'll do that real quick. Uh, number one is a question for you. Are you sitting on single family rentals, single family home rentals with equity? Okay. If you are, here's what Jordan did. Jordan had a single family home, he has several, with equity that he sold and he tended to exchange into a larger commercial property and he did it with uh, deferring all the capital gains taxes. It's a brilliant strategy. In fact, there's a video that will appear on the, on the screen here to show you how it works, okay? So, uh, so, in fact, Jordan told me that this one single family home that he sold and, and, and bought into the commercial is equivalent to, to doing 10 single family home deals, okay? Consider that, that's huge, okay? All right, uh, rule number two, uh, commercial real estate investing is a relationship-based business. It will always be, okay? In this video, uh, you'll see how a motivated sell, uh, buyer, Jordan, and a motivated seller, Jeanette, came together to create a beautiful deal. There's a quote I'd like to share with you that I believe in too. It's from Zig Ziglar, and it's kind of the, the theme of this video is uh, he believes, and I believe too, that if you can help uh, several people get what they want, you'll get what you want. Got it? Okay. Now, uh, rule number three, just one commercial deal sometimes is all it takes to dramatically impact your financial life forever. You're going to see that in this video. All right, okay, let's go to the video now. Hello everyone, hey, thanks for hanging out with us today. And boy, do I have a, uh, a special student and awesome guy, awesome human being, Jordan with us, gonna share his story of uh, how he's uh, converting a, a, uh, a small town's motel that's thriving into an apartment building that's going to soon thrive. And we're gonna share with you all about the deal and uh, Jordan's here today to share the story. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, this story really isn't about the deal. It's more about the person and the people involved. And let's jump into it. Jordan, thank you. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Peter. Nice to talk with you. All right. Thank you for, for just sharing your story. And I know it's Saturday morning and you probably have the kids around. And, and uh, so I really appreciate your time taking, taking out for us. Excellent. Well, happy to be here to take a few minutes with you. All right. Awesome. All right. So, Jordan, let's jump into it. Share us, share with us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. So, um, I'm your typical middle-aged family guy. I've got three kids, all boys. Um, I have had a, uh, a history, background, career in commercial insurance. Um, and about three or four years ago now, I had um, kind of transitioned and pursued real estate in a significant way and have had success. Um, and now parlaying that success into more of a, 
uh, commercial uh, focus. Okay, great. And uh, share share with us uh, why commercial. So, what are, what are some of the driving factors of why you went from investing in single family homes into commercial? You know, for me, a couple of things. I have an older brother that has done really well in commercial real estate, and I've kind of just observed from afar of his transition and call it trajectory through the last call it 10 to 15 to maybe 20 years now. He's just an incredible. So that was kind of a reason for my thinking maybe a transition made sense. But now since I've really been actively um, you know, really engaged in commercial side, I can just sense and understand how you're really able to leverage a, one, even one transaction that would be you know, extremely profitable that might equate to like 10 properties on this single family side. Um, yeah. fact, this deal that we're going to talk about here right now, I think is a perfect example of that. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And as we, as we uh, always say here in our company, you know, it sometimes all it takes is one commercial deal to dramatically impact your life for, for generations. And yeah. I believe this I believe you 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 close on a deal with that's is is just that. All right, all right. So without further ado, let's jump into the deal. So sh- share with us the deal. Yeah. So it's a uh, it, it's a, what it was and what it is 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 it's a 16 unit motel uh, with an adjoining annex uh, building called the annex. That's a nine unit apartment complex that's neighboring. Um, and uh, went ahead and connected with ultimately the seller that we are, uh, that I've been working with. Uh, we just closed on the transaction just a few weeks ago. And um, it, it, by all accounts, it's going to be a home run from not only a cash flow perspective, uh, NOI, um, our conversion project, I think is tight from motel to apartments. I think what I'm really excited about as well as Ultimately, the motel units are all one bedroom with kitchens. Uh, actually, six of the uh, six of the sixteen units we're going to be adding kitchenettes to them. But the county where we're where where we where we've made the acquisition, we go in to talk to you know their zoning permitting folks about our plans. Well, once I told them what we were wanting to do, they were so excited to know that we were going to be bringing affordable working class housing to the area, which is in gross, terrible need, if you will. Um, So, you know, knowing that that's what we're doing, the numbers work, our pro forma is solid. Um, I'm just really excited about it. That's awesome. That's awesome. And um, uh, what's special about this deal is, are are the people involved? So, so, yeah, so please share that. I want to hear that the most. Yeah. In fact, let me tell you a funny story. Um, so w- when I first engaged with our seller, um, I had an initial fo- phone call conversation with her and just kind of talking with her from a high level, getting to know her a little bit. Well, about 10 minutes into the conversation, she said, well, we've had just a terrible time with COVID finding and keeping staff to help run the motel, you know, cleaning rooms and, you know, all, you know everything goes along with that. So she goes over the last few years, or even I think maybe she said a year at the time, but she goes, I've went ahead and I've hired my adult children to help me run the motel operation. And so I said, oh, that's interesting. And she goes, well, my, my children want to retire. And I said, oh, you know, you can, okay. And I, and I said, well, how old are your children? And she says, oh, they're 64 and 66. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, uh, her name is Jeanette. I go, Jeanette, well, if they're wanting to retire, then you're wanting to retire. Well, then how old are you? And it, it was okay to ask her that question. And she goes, well, I'm 84. And I just said, wow, that is amazing. So, you know, very sharp mind. Um, interesting though, is come to find out, she didn't tell me on the phone call, but um, over the last two years, she's had cataracts that have um, basically almost caused her to go blind. Mm. So she's been working the last two years during this COVID time with cataracts and essentially, you know, can't really see very wow. well. Um, so quite a story. Um, and Peter, I don't know if I'm fully answering your question right now, but I got going on that story. <laughs> okay. No, yeah. that's great. And there was one, one uh, 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 special story where when you, when you actually met Jeanette and she wanted to see your face, share that real quick. 
Yeah, it wasn't the first time I met her face to face. It was probably maybe the second or third time. But she asked me, she goes, would you come over here? And she goes, would you come just right close to my face? And I was like, oh, you know, sure. You know, I knew she was having a hard time seeing, obviously. But I got about six inches from her face and she goes, oh, I can see you. She's like, oh, OK, it's so nice to be able to put your face wow. with your voice. And wow. by that time, I think we had kind of developed a bit of a relationship and trust in the conversation. So, I mean, it was like her way of kind of being um, kind of more informal, maybe maybe intimate. I don't know if that's the right word, but that's kind of how it felt. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And. Uh, w when you have a uh, motivated seller, motivated buyer like yourself, you can create beautiful things. Yeah. So, so, so share with us how the how the deal kind of went together, uh, you know, all together. So you eventually let's start here. You you're selling you you have sold one of your single family homes, yeah. and to uh, ten thirty one exchange and and buy this buy this uh, motel, right? So so yeah. share share the financing. How how did that work out? Well, it was quite remarkable because um, I took what was a single family rental property. Actually, it was an upstairs three bedroom and then a downstairs flat or an, uh, an ADU and where I, where I sold the property, but ended up doing really well on the sale. Um, I sold it to the renter and I knew that he had the financial means. So that transaction was clean. Um, but I rolled what was those, those proceeds straight into the acquisition of this motel slash annex property um, and almost literally to the dollar it was exactly what I needed <laughs> for funding essentially to get the you know transaction done um, yeah. from a financing perspective yeah it, almost, it was incredible. almost meant to be and and along the way we have these challenges right that you have to overcome and that you probably wouldn't be able to overcome if it wasn't for your relationship with the seller right? Yeah. Absolutely. yeah. So what were some of those challenges? Well, you know, it was very interesting. Um, so I was working with a, working with a, a local bank here where, where I am and by, by all accounts, everything was smooth going towards the closing. And um, at the last minute I get a phone call from, you know, essentially the underwriter I was working with there. And they said, Hey, we have a problem on our closing statement from uh from escrow we're seeing that there's this essentially um credit of a hundred thousand dollars and then a fifty thousand um, dollar um sprinkler installation she goes well you know what is this and so all of a sudden red light it was maybe like a like they perceived as maybe like a kickback to the seller which actually wasn't the case um but that kind of caused a little bit of friction with my lender well and this was just a couple days before closing well, I sit down with my seller, kind of telling her what was going on, how we we're having some issues. And right on the spot, we were able to convert what was that conversation that we were having to what was seller financing, where she was going to hold the note um, as a promissory note. And then um, part of that 1031 paid off the existing mortgage, which was just incredible. So the terms that I was able to negotiate with her um, are by all by all accounts extremely advantageous, much better than what I was going to get with even the bank. Yes, it's just um, I'll call it uh, a blessing all around. I know she's very happy. You know, it was interesting because talking to her is she was not so focused on what she was going to receive. She was most focused on how much money that would be going to be left for her children. Mm her adult children, the two, the, the two adult children she, um, that were helping her with the motel. So it was interesting because as we were putting together, ultimately what was the seller financing, she was happy to know that there was going to be plenty of money, perhaps after her passing, that would take care of her kids. Yeah. And that was her main focus. Yeah. You know, uh, Jordan, this is the beauty of, of how we taught you how to go direct to the property owner. Yeah. Imagine if there is an agent or someone else in between, you wouldn't be able to create that relationship with the seller and create not only get all these obstacles, but also get seller financing. There's no doubt about that. There's no, no doubt. I mean, you know, having that direct involvement, direct interaction with your seller, you know, going and meeting them, shaking their hands. It's it, you can't do that with an agent in the middle. of Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Now, my other other thought, um, as you and I were working through the deal, 
Uh, so we have this, um, we have this uh, 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 row of buildings that they're motel units, and then we have this apartment building, and uh, so and we have this lot in the back, right? Yeah. yeah. So and then uh, yeah. So tell us about this lot. So we had no idea that the the lot was separate, and so so sure that I mean that's that is huge in itself. It it is. So there's these three parcels: the motel property the annex, the nine unit. And then in the back, there's this empty lot. And, you know, when you first go there, you don't think much of it. But as we start to get into the deal and into the details and looking at, you know, what's all involved, we did, we found out there's a half acre uh, commercially zoned lot that was just sitting there as underdeveloped land behind the, behind um, both buildings. So interesting is with your, with your advice, Peter, um, I did go back to Jeanette or seller. And I asked her, I kind of told her what the, my objective was is to maybe treat that back lot as a separate transaction, mm-hmm. um, truly separate transaction. And, um, and she had no problems with that approach. I said, we're still not trying to take any money out of, out of the pro- your back pocket or the deal, but I just want to isolate that. So I'm going to be able to keep that unencumbered for future development. Yeah. And she was like, she, and I was like, well, I need to at least put something in our purchase agreement and I, so she goes, why don't we put a hundred dollars? So I bought a half acre commercially zoned lot for $100. <laughs> That's, That's awesome. And for, yeah. those of, and, and for those of you out there, uh, so the reason why we, we had Jordan do that is because the bank is going to put a loan on all three parcels and then the, the lot will be uncovered with the loan. So we decided to just have the bank only lend on the two uh, properties and and not the land. So the land is free and clear now. And yeah. uh, so the land is worth whatever it's worth. So now you, you could refinance it, pull money out, build on it. What what are your plans um, on, on that piece of land? Well, as we talked a little bit, we, you know, we're going to, we're going to get the, the, the motel convert conversion done. We're going to stabilize the whole property, but then we're going to turn our focus into probably what would either be um more units of an apartment, but probably what would be even just easiest and maybe even more lucrative um, would be do like maybe eight um, mobile home pads. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, where this property sits is on a separate street behind. So they have a separate entrance, the whole thing. Um, And again, zoned commercial, I've already talked to the county. They said, virtually you can put any type of business that you want on this. Um, They'd mentioned storage units, they had mentioned mobile home, apartments, um, stores. I mean, I think they pretty much mentioned anything under the sun. There was a few exceptions, and I forget what they were now, but um, a lot of options. Okay, great. So, Jordan, let's let's um, uh, or please share what their purchase price was, right? The amount of money needed to do the conversion and what the after repair value is only on the uh, the motel conversion and the um, the annex. The apartment. So, so please share that. Okay. So ultimate purchase price was $1.35 million. Um, there was some negotiating that went kind of back and forth with Jeanette and I, but ultimately $1.35 is where we settled. What's crazy though, and excited about that is if you do the math, um, it actually ends up being only $48,000 a door, which um, from a comparable perspective, we have comparables that are, you know, 85 to $95,000 a door. Um, so, you know, do the math on that. Um, what, what I'm excited about is after stabilization and hiring the property manager, that's going to ultimately run the property. Um, from an NOI perspective, I think we're looking at probably, you know, one eight to even $2 million um, after stabilization. Conserv- that's awesome. Yeah. And that is what, without the lot development, that's only the real estate, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. That is awesome. What an awesome deal. What an awesome deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll be honest. I, I'm extremely happy. Peter couldn't have done this without you. I, I knew when I transitioned into commercial, I knew hiring a company, a coach, um, a mentor is absolutely important. I mean, there was things that, you don't even know that you don't even know um, when you're, you know, looking at commercial versus, uh, you know, single family residential, um, you, you know, so impactful uh, relationship with you, Peter and the team. 
I couldn't be happier and just very thankful to be working with you guys. You're you're so welcoming and working with you too. Ideal student, ideal. All right. So so Jordan, um, so share with us what what does the future look like for you for in terms of uh, commercial real estate investing. So what's what what's, what are you going to do? Well, you know, it's funny, Peter. I'll go back here. So I know when we first connected, you asked me, "Hey, what are your goals?" for for this relationship and i said well this first this first year i think you actually said first year goal i think is what you asked me and i said you know if we ended up doing two transactions this year i would be very happy and what's crazy is is what six months into this relationship we've got two properties so um that's incredible to me um but but going forward honestly if we could just knock down call it one to two well for sure probably two properties a year um, going forward, trade up, if you will, more of these 1031 exchange um, transactions are just incredible for, you know, f for acquisition um, to, you know, to get that down payment in place. I have found also cost segregation from tax perspective is huge. So there's just a lot of positives. I think the future is very bright. Jordan, you know, thank you again for this uh, time. This is an awesome interview and thank you. This is so inspiring. To people, this is your first deal, your first commercial deal. So, yeah. so inspiring to others. And I just want to thank you for just, you know, sharing your story and uh, and how you uh, you blessed uh, uh, Jeanette and her son. What's your son's name? Uh, Scott. And his daughter, her name is Jan. Okay. So, you, so you have, yeah. Okay. So how you blessed her family, you, yeah. you, you help her achieve her goal. Yeah. What a sweet, what a sweet old lady and just yeah. so happy to be connected. Yeah. And you are a good man for doing what you did. You created this huge win-win. So yeah. awesome, awesome job, Jordan. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, Jordan. Well, uh, I'll let you get back to your uh, your, your Saturday. I, I appreciate your time. And uh, you take care, and I'll, I'll be seeing you uh, very soon. Thank you, Peter. Good talking to you. All right. Welcome back. Now, wasn't Jordan just today just phenomenal? What a great human being he is. He has dramatically... Uh, uh, improved the life of Jeanette and the, and the two kids forever. So just hats off to Jordan. Do me a favor, just give Jordan a high five. Tell him congratulations for what he's done for Jeanette and himself and his kids, okay? So how I wanna wrap up this video is ask you a quick question, okay? Were the life goals of Jordan and Jeanette met? Yes, they were. So I'm gonna share with you uh, with the details of the deal, how how that came down. All right, uh, number one, Jordan's goals what goals were to uh, purchase his for commercial deal and create generational wealth for himself, his wife, and the three kids. Mission accomplished here. Okay, the purchase price of the motel, the apartments, and and uh, the land is one point three five million. Okay, uh, he sold his single family home and used the proceeds as a down payment, it was about $300,000, okay? Um, secondly, he, the, the price per unit, right, when he purchased each individual, individual unit was for about $48,000 per unit. This includes the motel units and the apartment units, okay? If you divide everything up, right? Now, if you go online and you see what other places are selling for per unit, it's about eighty-five dollars to $95,000 a door. So Jordan is walking into this deal with built-in equity, okay? He has bought it, successfully bought it under market. Next, he's gonna pay the seller $6,000, pay the seller $6,000 a month as part of this agreement, okay? And then the after repair value, once everything is converted and up and running, it's gonna be worth about $2 million, right? I think that's, that's conservative. It's gonna be a little more than that, okay? And then also, this number, this $2 million does not include uh, what he's going to do with the land. So the options are various. So he's going to do quite well in this deal. So his life goals were accomplished. Uh, next is Jeanette, the seller, right? So she received $300,000 at closing. She is now retired, okay? So again, high five uh, to Jordan for creating that for her. Um, she will also receive about $6,000 a month. Now that she's 84 years old, what 84 year old can uh, will you know will will not want to receive six thousand dollars a month and having no other bills so she can live quite well in that small town and uh, and thirdly 
Jeanette's two kids will receive about $800,000, right, at the end of the, uh, Jordan's deal, which is about five years. So the kids are left with life-changing money. Got it? All right. Okay, great. So there you go. So this video was was uh, it's entitled uh, Motel to Apartment Conversion, and, and we did that, but it was really about these two individuals. This business is about people. People. All right. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want uh, more like this, go ahead and click the like button, but also go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Check out our website, commercialpropertyadvisors.com. Thank you so much, everyone. And I really appreciate you all. And I hope you have a great rest of the day. I'll see you at the next video.